inspire, empower, grab your girls and soar a little higher, unlock the fire in you, cause real women don't bitch, no, real women don't, 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 bitch. Hey, 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 thank you for joining me on the Real Women Don't Bitch podcast. This is your proud host, August Crenshaw, a.k.a. Mrs. Raw, Real and Relentless. I am the number one advanced mental conditioning specialist for entrepreneurs because building mental muscle is necessary in order to implement successful business strategies. This show has been created for the woman who is not excuse driven and needs help building a profitable business. I will be interviewing women from various fields who are willing to break the silence on struggles that specifically affect female entrepreneurs. Welcome to a show where I and guest speakers from time to time share our methods that help us beast our business no matter what is going on in our lives. Whether you are an online or brick and mortar business owner, this show is for you. We will hit every angle, personal, professional, and spiritual. Why? Because on any given day, you get hit with shit from a scenario involving one, more, or perhaps all of the above. It all impacts you and your mindset towards your business. I have made it my personal mission to provide a space where we dive deep into the BS we face on a day-to-day basis. All right, now, we've been talking about sales for the last few days, and it wouldn't be a conversation about sales if we didn't talk about that ugly word. You know the old word, objections. That's the part that everybody dreads because they are ready for those classic statements like, you know what? I'm going to get back with you after I speak to my husband. That has to be the most famous one. And I won't lie. I've used it before to get out of (laughs) several situations where I was like, "Um, I'm really not sure. Sometimes I use that just because I was nervous. I wanted to move forward but I wasn't certain. And I can honestly say that several people clam up when they hear that, but that isn't the only objection. And there are objections that are specific to everyone's industry. And I want to talk about how you handle this because I'm doing everything in my power to set you up for success. But I do want to go ahead and give you one tiny nugget that is extremely beneficial specifically for that typical objection. One thing that I make sure that I do is if I think that that may be an issue because of the type of product that I'm selling or the price point, when I start speaking to a business owner, I ask pre-qualifying questions in a manner that doesn't feel uncomfortable either. For instance, I'll say, so uh, tell me a little bit about your business. Oh, that's awesome. Now, is this your business? Do you work alone or do you work with your spouse? Okay. Oh, no, that's great. Also, you do it by yourself. Are you the one who makes all the decisions for the business? I mean, does he have any kind of involvement in it at all? You see where I'm going? And with that line of questioning, what ends up happening is a person will be like, oh, no, no, it's my business or I do this or, well, no, it's my business, but I do talk to him about everything. I can get a feel for stuff. And then I go straight in for what I like to call the hard questions. And this is why a lot of individuals can't handle objections is because you don't want to ask the hard questions. If I start hearing in the conversation that they're already setting up that defense mechanism to potentially pull that card in the end, then I'll say something to them like, you know what, before we really get into this process, perhaps we should reschedule. I would hate for you to try to articulate all of these wonderful things that I'm about to tell you and try to reiterate these things to your spouse. How about we reschedule this at a time when both of you will be available? And here's the thing, if they weren't serious and they were kind of fishing around, they'll say that and they'll go and they'll never come back and reschedule. 
if it is something that they really want, they'll be like, oh no, well I can make a decision as long as it's below this dollar amount or et cetera, et cetera. And then from there, they'll let it be known that they plan on moving forward and continuing the discussion with me. That's one of the key elements to getting past objections. And that is being willing to ask the hard questions. But before we even get there, wouldn't it just be nice to get rid of the objections? And my advice to you is to pay attention to the data. If you notice, I've mentioned on a couple of occasions that you should write things down. Sales is not something that you learn how to do and you master it right away. There are some things that you can implement right away that can change your conversion rate immediately, but mastering sales specifically for your products and services requires you to do a little work. And some of that work means that you write stuff down. When you start hearing people say specific rebuttals over and over again, you should already have your toolbox ready to open fire with your responses because you know that people have a tendency to say certain things about buying products for dieting, for investing in marriage coaching, for investing in business coaching. There are certain things that people say when it comes to whether or not they do or don't want to go forward with investing in a multi-level marketing company before they allow you to publish their book. Whatever it is that they do, there are certain things that you're going to realize that you hear on a regular basis. And what you need to do is you need to have your tools ready so that you can have a rebuttal for those types of objections on a regular basis. And that's something that you'll master over time. Here's another nugget that I want to give you. Have some type of pre-qualifying form that people have to fill out. You can use something simple like type form for free. Start having a process that before you allow someone to have your time, especially if you don't charge for your strategy sessions, discovery calls, meetups, whatever it is that you're doing, if you're spending time to meet with people, have some pre-qualifying questions first, whether that is questions that you ask over the phone or questions that you ask over the internet and make sure whatever matters to you, you know, whatever those questions are, put them on the form. And then based on the answers that you get, then you can respond to people and say, I want to thank you for your interest, but I don't think at this time that my product or service is a good fit for you. For people that once again, that are not really interested for individuals that are on the fence and they're just kind of surfing around, you know what? No harm, no foul. Who cares? But for people that really, really want to work with you, you're putting them in a position where they're like, oh my God, I need to like really make up my mind if this is something that I want to do or not, because I can see that this person doesn't play. What happens, unfortunately, with most people when it comes to selling, especially if you're used to getting no's or it's been hard for you to get some type of inquiry about the services that you offer, unfortunately, you act out of desperation. Anybody and everybody that shows an interest, you're like, okay, okay, all right, let me talk to you, let me talk to you, and you set yourself up. And the reason why a lot of you have low closing rates is because you're taking the time to talk to a lot of people who want who are not an ideal fit in the first place. Now, this was like super duper simple. This is one of those episodes where, look, it did not need to take all day for me to come on here and talk to you about handling the objections that can come across your plate. The key cues that you need to remember from this segment is number one, be willing to ask the hard questions. Don't leave things vague. Don't leave things in the hand of the person to say something to hope they open up. Do that. Pre-qualify people, whether you're doing that on a phone call before you set up a meeting or you're using some type of questionnaire before you even allow someone to have your time, especially if you are giving away your sessions, your meetups for free to introduce them into some type of package. And then last but not least, learn to weave certain questions for a hard core objections in a conversation casually to get an individual to say what you need to hear so that they can't even use that objection at the end. I call that obliterating objections or objection obliteration. I like to just get rid of it period. That's one thing that will definitely set you up for success. 
For those of you that may be listening to this podcast and this is your first episode, we have been talking about sales for the last few days. We've talked about everything from getting your mindset right and creating your own sales mantra to developing a rapport with a client and what that looks like and why it is so important. And a lot of those juicy details that you need about their desires and how they feel and how you can hit their heartstrings to overcome objections as well. That's the secrets to that is in the rapport section. And then we talked about getting into the actual assessment, asking the right kind of questions to get people to tell you the pertinent data that you need to know to make sure that you're a good fit to serve them and so that you can make them the right kind of offer without being so crazy about, oh my God, let me just offer them everything and up sell them and oversell them, which actually ends up to no selling them. All of those topics were covered in previous episodes. We're building up as we're going along. I highly encourage you to go back. For those of you that are interested in getting a more in-depth teaching on this, you have an opportunity to tap into the close of sale replays, which are absolutely phenomenal. I go in depth on each one of these sections and even give you worksheets to fill out for you to structure this sales conversation specifically for your products based on your personality, your brand, and what you need to do in your specific industry because I do not believe in cookie cutter options. Just head on over to realwomendonbitchpodcast.com and get your hands on that ASAP and turn yourself into a sales closing machine. Okay, so that was brief, simple. Keep those nuggets down, write them down, do your due diligence, exercise your homework, and then come back in tomorrow for your next quick nugget on closing the sale. We're literally going to talk about closing the sale. With all of that being said, I'm going to continue to chime in here, giving you advice, nuggets, tips, strategies, et cetera, to soak in your brain so that you can take your business to the next level. It's always a pleasure to chat with you. Until the next episode, I'm Audi. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to cultivate a mindset that is biased towards taking action. No bitching, whining, or complaining. Here, our mantra is real women don't bitch we get shit done see you next week as i continue to bring you what you need to keep your head in the game and beast your business don't forget to hit subscribe and leave us a five-star review would you like a specific topic covered have a question you would like answered live then head on over to real women don't bitch podcast.com subscribe to my email list hit me up and i got you Interested in being a guest speaker? You walk the walk, then you can sign up on the website too. This is your number one advanced mental conditioning specialist for entrepreneurs, Mrs. Raw, Real, and Relentless, signing out. Deuces! Inspire, empower, grab your girls and soar a little higher. Unlock the fire in you.